If you're looking for a full flavored meal prep recipe that's not boring and tastes bland, this one is definitely the one you want. Starting with a fantastic delicious sauce that's acidic and salty, mixed with rice, you don't have to use it if you don't want to, loads of different vegetables, all cooked in a fantastic meat sauce. Let's get straight into it. As always, we'll start with the prep. We're going to need one brown or yellow onion. Both ends can be removed, which is the root and the tip. Slice it in half and then just peel these things, getting that skin right off. And you can save all of the scraps for a stock. With this then in the half moon position, we're then going to thinly slice this into nice little strips. When you get about three quarters of the way through, just lay it flat, which will allow you to continue slicing safely. Next is one red bell pepper or capsicum for my Australian and New Zealand friends. This can be sliced in half through the root. There is a few different ways you can do this. You can pick it off, you can slice it upwards and slice round the core if you wanted to. Just make sure you pick out any pith and bang it on the bench to remove any excess seeds. An easy way to cut this is just to push this down with the palm of your hand, it will flatten it out. And then this can just be continued slicing safely, nice and thin into strips, pretty much the same size as we did with the onion. We're then moving on to one large carrot. You can peel this if you wanted to, just make sure you give it a wash before you do anything. And then we're gonna run it along the larger side of a box grater to get this nice and shredded up. You can also cut this into matchstick cuts, which is also known as julienne. But if you do grate it, just make sure you give it a little bang. Now this right here is one bunch of broccolini. You can use regular broccoli if you wanted to, and this weighs about 300 grams. I'm gonna slice off the tips, and I tried to scrape it off doing something cool, but it failed. And then we're gonna slice this into strips, cutting them a nice even size so they cook at the same rate. Now this is optional, but I've got one spring onion or scallion, and I'm going to separate the green stem from the white root end, and then we're going to thinly slice the white root into nice thin strips, and this is going to be used in the cooking process of the stir fry. And with the green stem, this can be sliced on a slight angle to create diamond or oval shaped pieces, and this is going to be used as a garnish, so like I said, you don't have to use this if you don't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of spring onions. Now this recipe wouldn't be complete without 5 cloves of garlic and 15 grams of ginger. Both of these can be run along a microplane to create pastes and you can mix both of them together because they're going in at the same time. You can also use store-bought pastes, but let me tell you, fresh is always best. With the fresh ingredients out of the way, we can then make our sauce. This is 100 milliliters of low sodium soy sauce and 40 milliliters of rice vinegar for a nice salty and acidic flavor. 70 grams of brown sugar for a nice little sweetness. 15 milliliters of toasted sesame oil for a nice nutty flavor, that garlic and ginger paste for a beautiful infusion, and about 1.5 grams of crushed chili flakes for a nice little spice, but it is completely optional. This can then be given a quick whisk just to mix together, and we can mix it again before we add it in, and then we can pop this aside for the time being. Now, as you saw in the intro, we're going to be cooking rice. I know some of you might be thinking, oh, rice again, but it is the perfect side for a dish like this. And in a saucepan, we're going to add in 300 grams of washed jasmine rice, along with 500 milliliters of cold water, salt to taste, then give it a mix around to break up any clumps and bring it to a boil. Reduce the heat to low, place on a lid, and then cook this for 12 minutes undisturbed. After 12 minutes, we're going to turn this off the heat and leave the lid on for a final six minutes before then removing the lid and then give this a fluff up with a fork or spatula and then remove it from the stovetop. As always, the macros are included and this right here is the macros for five individual portions. Now for the main part of this dish, which is the stir fry, we're going to place a large pan or wok over a high heat, add in 30 milliliters of peanut oil, getting it nice and hot. Then slide in one kilo of beef mince or ground beef, which is about 90% lean and 10% fat. You can use more or less, it is completely up to you. We're then going to spread this around evenly so it's all sitting nice and flat, breaking it up a little bit. And we're going to cook this for about three minutes to get a nice golden brown crust. During this time, we can also hit it up with some sea salt flakes, as well as a little bit of ground white pepper. The choice is completely up to you, whether or not you want to use ground pepper or you can use some cracked black pepper. After three minutes, we can then mix this around and we're going to make sure it gets browned all over now and we're going to continue cooking for another three minutes. If you have a higher fat percentage, you can cook this for about 10 to 15 minutes, but because it's so lean, we don't want to cook it for too long because it doesn't have too much moisture in it. Now, once the beef's all browned off, we can then add the onion in, breaking it up and mixing it through. And some of you may be thinking, why didn't we fry the onion off first, then add the beef in? I like to do it this way, it adds a nice little textural crunch and a different flavor, but you're more than welcome to fry the onion off first, then add the beef in. As for the onion, we are just going to fry this off with the beef for about two minutes, just mixing it through to get a nice little bit of color and for that onion to release its moisture. Next to go in is the grated carrot, the broccolini or broccoli, as well as the capsicum or bell pepper, along with sea salt flakes to taste and more ground white pepper or cracked black pepper those white root ends of the spring onion as well. And then we're gonna mix this all through and cook this for about two minutes, getting that moisture out of those vegetables and then increasing the flavor of everything within. 
just making sure to soften it up in the process and it is good to have texture on these types of dishes you don't want to cook this completely all the way otherwise it will just turn into mush after two minutes and the vegetables have just slightly softened up we can add all of that sauce in making sure to scrape it all in there because this is definitely the flavor of everything and we're going to mix this around and cook this for about three minutes you can cook it for a little bit less just don't reduce it down too much otherwise you'll have no sauce left in the dish if it does get a little bit dry, you can add a splash of chicken stock or vegetable stock to make it a little bit more saucy, but I don't recommend doing that because the flavor within this sauce is absolutely delicious. After a couple of minutes, the sauce will have reduced down. You can then add in sesame seeds if you wanted to. This is completely optional and you can toast them off beforehand to add a little bit more of a nutty flavor. But all we have to do now is mix these through if you have obviously added them and then we can remove this from the stovetop. One last thing before we do remove it from the stovetop though, just make sure you test it for seasoning and adjust if necessary. As for the macros for this part of the dish, it's 26 grams of fat, 30 grams of carbs and 46 grams of protein per serving. And then we're going to divide everything by 5 into these 750 milliliter containers, which I do have a link for in the description if you're interested. And make sure you top it off with any leftover sauce, evenly dividing it by the 5 again. Optional extras are some sesame seeds or toasted sesame seeds and then also that spring onion that we did at the beginning. But with all of that done, we are then left with these beautiful and delicious Korean beef stir fry meal preps which will last you the whole week or depending on how many you eat per day, it's completely up to you. And these are the macros for everything combined and that is per portion. Now with these, I recommend letting them cool down for about 10 minutes before placing the lids on. Then they can go straight in the fridge, cooling them down as quickly as possible. They'll last in the fridge for up to five days and in the freezer for up to four months. If you want to reheat them, place them in the microwave for about two to three minutes, mixing them every now and again. Or you can put it in a pan over a medium heat, mix it all together and kind of have it like a fried rice stir fry style. It is absolutely delicious. Also, if they are frozen, you can just get them out, put them in the fridge overnight and just defrost them that way. It's the easiest way to do it because if you put them in the microwave whilst they're frozen and defrost things like that, it will just completely destroy the dish. As always, though, the only thing that's left to do is, of course, we can then dig in. That right there is the perfect blender flavor. It's a little bit salty, sweet, a little bit acidic, and also there's a little bit of chili creeping up on your tongue as well. You don't have to add it if you don't like that. Texture is absolutely amazing as well. When you mix this all together, that rice really absorbs all the sauce and the flavor just blends perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It really does help me out and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.